welcome to episode eight of the I Went Outside Today podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris. I'm Cheryl. I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, though? I'm Sydney. I do the things. <laughs> Good job. And yeah, I just have to say one of the first feedbacks I've gotten back is my beautiful voice about podcasts. Mm-hmm. I'm tripping all over my words. I've had too many drinks. Two? <laughs> Too, too many. Yeah, featherweight. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the only thing anyone has to say about a podcast is Chris has such a not a nice voice. Not that I have a nice voice. Not that Cheryl has a nice voice. It's just all about Chris. I already know that I don't have a nice voice. For you have a nice voice. Not for radio. I like hearing it. I well. have a face for radio, so it's fine. <laughs> uh. Actually, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people saying that they really enjoyed it, that they think it's funny, and that they like the banter, and people haven't seen an idea like this before. That's good. Yeah. I'm not reading the comments because of just who I am as a person. Well, these are just comments from people that I know. They've come to me personally. By the way, we trademark this idea as of right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's copyrighted. We'll sue you. I worked for a lawyer, so fucking test me. (laughs) Yeah, actually, the minute I dropped the episode, one of my friend's husbands, like, called. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. No, my friends called me. (laughs) Well? This is garbage. Maybe I have better friends than you. (laughs) I mean, maybe. Oh, sorry to hear about your friends. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have many friends that are into podcasts. Fair enough. I'm always trying to get people into shit, and they're never about it. My ex told me never to start a podcast because it's too much work, and creative differences he was like it's so much work you wouldn't like it blah 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 you wouldn't like it and like jokes on that guy because i don't do any work i show up i get drunk i rant and then i go home this is the easiest thing i've ever done (laughs) so fuck you has he actually listened to an episode no not that i know of okay fair unless he went on his of his own volition and listened to it when i posted it i almost didn't want to share it on my page because i don't want to know what people think I mean, everyone said it was, like, funny, but I don't want to know. <laughs> How many beers have you had at this point? Or, wait, drinks. I had two drinks earlier, mm-hmm. but those are don't count. Okay. So one and a half. I'm trying to get hyped up to record. Just, you know, if you're sounding slightly disgruntled now, how disgruntled are you going to sound later? As disgruntled as I need to be. Okay. It's not going to be the Creationist Museum all over again. Everyone relax. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had to edit out many, many hours of <laughs> ramblings. Thank you, Chris. No problem. <laughs> it was fun to listen to again. We're not even going to have any listeners after that episode because it's just me yelling. I yelled so much I lost my voice, for those of you that didn't hear the updates. And well, uh, back to the point about uh, us having an idea that no one else has uh, done before. We should probably say that our format is going to change like a little bit. Mm-hmm. So in episode one where we had come up with a list a great list of plans, uh, things that we would do for season one of the podcast. COVID just went through and stomped in all our ideas. Waffle stomped them down the drain. Uh, So basically, the change of the format is going to be that once a month, we're going to introduce Sydney to a thing, and she's going to do that thing. There may or may not be a teaser to let you guys know what we're doing, but just because of the uncertain times right now, we kind kind of have to go on a less regular schedule. Yeah, our plans are getting canceled as soon as we make them. All the time. So going forward, it'll still be entertaining. It'll still be the same sort of idea. It'll just be a little bit less planned. So those of you who were hoping to hear about anime speed dating and the furry convention. It's all canceled, folks. It's not me. I didn't cancel it. Probably next year. Which gives you a little bit extra time to work on your fursuit. I hope this pandemic lasts forever. Have you picked what animal you're going to be? Obviously a bat. I found like a fucking hilarious bat poncho. I'm ready. Excellent. You should wear it to the speed dating event too. Mm, I don't know about that. And you tell them, guess what anime I'm from. I don't know if there's a bat anime. I know. So (laughs) now that we're like shaking things up and being adaptable people who are changing our plans... Maybe we just, like, don't even do anime speed dating. Why not? Maybe some of us don't want to fucking hear about fruits baskets and those things. Fruit baskets is awesome. 
Is it Fruit Baskets or Fruits Basket? I think it's Fruits Basket. I haven't seen that anime. Talking I used silly. to own it. It's about the. Zo- I have a poster for you. Remind mm-hmm. me later. Okay. Sorry. It's all the animals of the Chinese zodiac. Yeah, and they're oh, all like an okay. actual animal. Yeah. Even People the love it like hardcore. Yeah. Isn't that one of the main dudes? Is the dragon? Mm, I no. The main dudes are the, the cat and the rat. Yeah. Which the cat is not part of the Chinese zodiac, and so that's how. If you love goes. Fruits Basket, I actually have several things for you. Okay, well, I, I mean, I haven't watched it since college, but yeah, I used to be a huge fan of it. If any of our listeners love Fruits Basket, I have several things mm. for you. <laughs> yeah, so Cheryl will continue to find the, the really good events that she normally finds for Sydney to do. She's a good hunter mm-hmm. of events. Mm-hmm. And that's a perfect segue into our I went outside today subject of hunting, hunting for gold, hunting for scavenger hunts, all the hunting. So we started this back before the podcast. Um, This is something that we kind of have been doing for, I don't know, two, two Two years. years. That's how we became friends. Yeah, that's how I met Sydney. Mm -hmm. So um, basically this company puts out treasure hunts in cities in Canada and now the states and there's clues you follow the clues to find the treasure the first year it was a hundred thousand dollars and now they've kind of brought it down to fifty thousand dollars yeah so the format is kind of similar to like an escape room where uh once it launches you have like a bunch of riddles and puzzles to figure out and it helps you progress throughout the game there's no room though the city is your room it's true it's like an escape city. The first one before we ever did it was the best, though. Someone was, like, ready with a canoe. <laughs> I hope that guy mm. wins one one day. I hope so, too. He was prepared. That's true. This is when, so, like, this year we did the third and fourth of the gold hunts. Uh, last year, I think, actually, I think was last year was the first two ever. Yes, because we did the first one. It was solved in 24 hours, and uh, people were a bit bummed. And they did another one that year. Yep. And they made it a lot harder the second time. Oh, my God. It was impossible the second time. (laughs) They definitely have an issue with, like, too easy, too hard, too easy, too hard. So they didn't make the third one too easy. Let's be clear. It was the okay, but, like, the actual location, I feel, was easy. I didn't solve that riddle, but. (laughs) (laughs) They also, yeah, I don't know. Like, it still seemed pretty difficult compared to the first one. Yes, it was harder than the first yeah. one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they did change formats in the second one. They did. So the I first mean. one, sort of, you said it was like a funnel. It's called the funnel riddle method. Yeah. Read the website, people. And they just kind of direct you from a general area to a smaller and smaller. and then Smaller and smaller. Like narrow in, narrow in, narrow in. Mm-hmm. And then round two was kind of what we all anticipated from round one, but wasn't really made clear which was like a run around the city Mm -hmm. type thing like the first uh hunt was only over like one and a half neighborhoods all Mm -hmm. of the other hunts have been like citywide yeah the first one was just one giant clue to a location so that we did not pick up on no city quadrant i don't know community to the block to a little stretch of trees by the road which is where we were supposed to find a little treasure box so after doing that first one, when we went to do the second one, of course, we were expecting the same format, which then threw things off way more because that is definitely not how the second one went. They were having growing pains as yeah. well. Uh, they introduced a concept of a, like a riddle checker, basically, where you had to enter your answers into a website and the website crashed immediately. Crashed <laughs> all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then you had to email your answers in and then they were like, we'll email you if you're right. So we emailed a bunch of correct answers and just never got emails back. Yeah. Yeah. So they changed it from one giant riddle that points to location to 16 different riddles, yeah. which all, all indicate to different points in the city that we live in. And once you solve all of those, it unlocks a second level, which is sort of a rinse and repeat. Find all of those locations and solve them. Mm-hmm. But they're like much harder. And then level three, which is and has been usually tougher, harder to figure out, the hardest. Out of control hard. Like vague, some would say. A little vague. A little vague, a little cryptic. Mm-hmm. A little not very riddly, so much as just words that don't lead you to anything. 
but it depends who you ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're following the conspiracy theorists on Reddit or Facebook or Twitter, Hmm. there are some pretty wild things out there. That was actually something, yeah, that was something that kind of shocked me about the first couple gold hunts. Um, Instantly, people are like, looking for reasons why the people who won won like they're digging into like the people's personal history and who their friends were and whatever else and it it was a little ridiculous because i don't know if people went in with the idea they were gonna win but like i had no i had no preconceived notion that i was gonna win i was just doing it for fun but these people took it as like some sort of vendetta or slight and they needed to figure out why the winners won instead of just being like, yeah, you know what? I, I lost. Like, better luck next time. Mm. I really thought we were going to win Gold Hunt 1, just to be clear. I was we- real emotionally invested. And I have not forgiven for, I have not forgiven the Puzzle family. We were within a few blocks of the, uh, the final location, too. We were. Yeah. This time we're in Gold Hunt 1. No Gold Hunt 1. Number one. But yeah, so the whole... Um, Riddles locations all over the city. They kept that format for the uh, Gold Hunt 3 and 4. Mm-hmm. Should I say Gold Hunt 3 and 4? I think so. What's wrong with that? All right. Or you don't want to say their company name. We're not your fucking advertisers, Gold Hunt. Well, they can give but us some you could gold. be. <laughs> 12 gold Honestly, pieces. let's bleep out their name and we'll release their name when they give us gold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're going to care. No. Probably not. No. So, yeah. For the third and fourth one, uh, they pretty much kept the exact same format. The riddle checker got better. Yes. A lot better. Well, not for Gold Hunt 3. <laughs> so let's just get right into Gold Hunt 3. Wait, can we We never even said our, we named them all after Die Hard. Oh, yeah. So the first few Gold Hunts that we did, and I guess even this one, hey? Mm-hmm. We used Die Hard names and just replaced words with them so they would be gold hunts with a vengeance gold hunt too hunt harder live free and gold hunt mm-hmm. yeah which is our most recent one yes after we run out of names we're gonna stop playing gold hunt we were not a die no hearts. we were just gonna so change the titles you. to what did we potter. decide star wars harry, harry potter. Potter. potter yeah jurassic park i don't think anyone cares about what we named our gold hunts i'm sorry <laughs> i made it weird <laughs> So Gold Hunt 3 kind of was a little strange um, because it was also sor- solved in like, was it 24 hours? Half, yeah, a day hours. and a half. Oh, yeah. So a problem with having an online platform is that there are people that want to hack slash destroy your fun on the internet. And so these people basically hacked the site and took all the answers and crashed it so they solved all the riddles without actually having done anything other than hacking the website and trading yes they have said on facebook there was trading and i think the the hacking is still out to okay we don't have there's an investigation but we don't have the full info yet fair Mm -hmm. enough and trading is in trading answers for other answers yes you're not supposed to do that yes so because how fast it was finished they then went on to do the uh, gold hunt that we just finished. So once number three crashed, they kind of set up a forum where people who were interested in contributing to how to make it better could join in and to try creating a better gold hunt the next time around. And Sydney and I both joined. To say some things. I started some fights. So what was your impression of what was going on in the forum? Um, I got really emotionally invested in when they should release riddles and started... <laughs> Maybe a pretty ag- ag- aggressive conversation about I thought that they should change the format to um, drop the level one riddles one week. And then who cares if you finish in one day, level two drops a week later. Because mm-hmm. that's a lot of like why people trade right? is to be like caught up. But if you have it up for a week, I feel like most people solve level one in a week. Mm-hmm. So anyway, someone else didn't like that. And we got in a real heated discussion about it. Um, did you get kicked out of the group? I did not. No. Nope, I didn't get kicked out. I still actually, to this day, people will randomly will like like that um, that post. You got some fans. Yeah, some fans of my idea for it. Not everyone likes that model, but that was like what I uh, felt pretty passionate about. <laughs> that was my main contribution. Mm-hmm. 
Cheryl, I think, contributed a lot more than I did. I don't know if I necessarily contributed. The one thing is that, like, I found that I was trying to suggest things that I would like, but there's so many people in that forum suggesting conflicting ideas and conflicting views that, like, I'm pretty sure mine just got lost in the shuffle of everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, the common rule of the internet, he who types in caps lock and is more aggressive gets heard. And yeah. that's just not my style, so. No. <laughs> there was definitely the, um, there's the camp of people that think it's a race mm-hmm. and the camp of people that think it's, um, that you win by being the smartest. Yes. And it was really a combo of both. Yeah, I think so. Kind of. Yeah, you definitely have to have a bit of luck. Like, we don't live in a big city, but we don't live in a small or public transit friendly city. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Like, some of the shit is far, so far. At least they were nice enough to restrict the play area to the ring road around the city, like, that goes kind of through the city, instead of having it be, like, the entire city. Because that, I think, would have made things crazier. Yeah, Yeah, nothing outside the ring road counts, though. Like, you're not part of our city, go away. Whoa. (laughs) But yeah, they have a defined playable area, so you're not going deeper and deeper into, like, the rural woods, Mm because the clue matches up to some barn you saw driving by on the highway. Yeah, no, there's a definable area. And uh, one good thing about the hack was uh, they let us play the fourth round for free. Yes, because they did not award a prize for round three. It was canceled. True. Yeah. Because so. you need to buy in into each gold hunt. And they, because they got hacked, they decided it probably wasn't too fair to make us pay again. They also let us, so one thing that was new in this gold hunt compared to the other ones is you could buy bo- bonus clues. Which is trash. <laughs> Some of us think it's trash. Yep. In gaming parlance, this is microtransactions. Yeah, basically. And so come this gold hunt, they let us just be able to transfer over our previous bonus clue purchases to this gold hunt. So the ones that we had already purchased before, we just had like a bunch that we could use towards this hunt if we wanted to. We had store credit. Yeah. So it was nice in that sense because you didn't really lose any money from the first hunt. The one thing that I think and we found it out at the end, I think, of the third hunt. They actually only recommend that you buy one map per household. And yeah, we didn't know that before. No. So we, we had been buying one map per person. That would have actually saved us a fair bit of money. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if they wanted to, like, throw some gold our way for being idiots, just I don't, saying. I'm, I don't think that's how gold hunt works. They, they only do. throw gold our way if we're smarty pants and we can find the gold. Mm-hmm. And a lucky pants. Mm-hmm. We need to wear two sets of pants for gold hunt. We need more pants. We cut it down the middle, and then one leg is for luck, and one leg is for smarts. I'm so sorry. You're welcome. I'm so tired. So now that we're on to the fourth hunt, from the previous hunts, can you remember what your favorite puzzle or your favorite riddle was? I hated all of them. Uh, I don't know. I like the ones that I know off the bat. There was um, part of the thing about gold hunt is that there are obviously city-wide riddles, and I'm not a city-wide Sydney. So, I mean, the ones that, like, were in my stomping grounds, those are the ones I like the best. Mm. I don't know. If you look all at our at our Facebook chat, although I, I get excited every once in a while. It's just me, like, in fucking caps lock for 1,000 years. I'm like, oh, this is my new theory! And screaming about it. Mm. That's always fun. I think the walking around is fun. The hills are not fun. Um, my absolute those favorite... Hills. I mean, my absolute favorite will be when we finally win. <laughs> my Even my bosses, they, they both know that I do this because on my lunch break, I'm always on like Google Maps and stuff. So I think I will I will reserve my favorite riddle for when I win because they're always checking in if I've won fucking 50 grand. Mm-hmm. So my favorite riddle will be when I finally get to say, I fucking told you I won one. <laughs> How about you guys? My favorite is actually the, uh, the Manitou Stone one. I knew that right away looking at it. The frustrating thing about that gold hunt was that I actually had to go to the location and I didn't realize and and my summer job or my job takes me out of the city in the summer. And so it's harder to participate in gold hunt when you're not even in the same city. But the Manitou Stone was my favorite. I think that one was good because people didn't realize that part of the museum is actually free to the public. And it kind of confused the average player into thinking that they couldn't get in there because 
Gold Hunt said, well, you're, you're not going to have to pay admission or any extra mm-hmm. money to be able to find the answers to the clues. So they didn't even get past the front door. Yes. They and stopped s- themselves. Correct. So it was kind of like, I don't know, because I volunteer at the museum on occasion. It was kind of like insider information. Like I knew something nobody else knew. So I really liked that one. I don't know if I have like a favorite clue, but I do feel like one of my favorite parts is like you have an idea and you're like oh this is a long shot and then you go to the area of town and there's already like 11 other people who are like playing it and they're already there or you like already know the idea and you know the answer and you found the answer and other people are like so close to it and they like ask you for like a hint and like you just have this little giddy moments like i know something you mm. don't know I one of my, change my answer. one of my favorite moments was when we were directed to the edmonton cold war bunker and we're standing by the building and this guy walks up to us and he's like where is the bunker and like i don't want to like give away answers for like nothing but i'm like you're very close because we were within like 10 feet of Mm -hmm. it like the big white wall was just off to our side and he's like oh come on i'm like trust me you will find it because we're standing right next to it and we just like walk away oh my goodness yeah it was very hope he got it i hope so too (laughs) i hope he's not still there oh my goodness he might be I hope not. Mm-hmm. Poor little guy. I got that one. Hey, I solved that one. Yeah, you did. I never solved any of the riddles, by the way, guys. I'm like definitely yes. the dumbest one on our team. No. But, um, you got the most heart. Yeah. I got the most heart. Yeah, <laughs> I got the most energy. I want to change my answer, though, because that made me remember a couple of things. So mm-hmm. I would say uh, in lieu of actually winning a gold hunt, my first favorite riddle is um, from Gold Hunt 2. We had to go to this point that we all kind of knew about called end of the world and I was like well I could walk there uh relatively easily from my work so went off and did that super hot like plus 30 degrees march all the way there and all black in my backpack and then the answer wasn't there and I was like oh my god like are we wrong and then I was like the only other thing from this area to do was to climb like all of the stairs in the entire world and I fucking hate stairs and I never sign on for anything with stairs it's not my style, but I was like, oh, I'm going to climb these fucking stairs. And I was a very, uh, either heavy smoker or like just quitting smoking at the time. And I scaled these stairs, like basically on hands and knees. And then the answer was like right at the top, like right before I burst into tears from not being able to solve, <laughs> I found the answer and solved the riddle. That was definitely one of my favorite, um, mm-hmm. ones that I solved. And then my next favorite moment in all of our Gold Hunt adventures was the final riddle of Gold Hunt 4. Um, I don't know if we're going to say the whole riddle, but there's basically the main idea was uh, we had to find in our city two Americans and one Canuck. And Cheryl and I have been researching for like five hours. And then I was like, I think it's this guy and this guy. And she goes, cool which one is there a canadian or are they both canadian and i just like was like yeah they're both canadian so the riddle didn't the answer didn't work and i we just like i just burst out laughing like just so like tired mm-hmm. so over googled i don't know i just like i like that moment of just being like so brain fried mm-hmm. i think one of my favorite moments if we're doing favorite moments i actually really enjoy when we find the answer to something and then we're trying to pretend we didn't find the answer so we don't let on to the fact that, like, the answer is there. Yeah. So then you kind of, like, play the little game where you're like, I'm going to pretend I didn't find it. Or you yell out the wrong answer, kind of, like, talk a little bit louder and in the hopes that you can stump people. Because one of the dynamics of the game is actually you can only guess three answers in an hour. And That's it sucks. True. And we want you to change it, Gold Hunt. And then they lock you out for an hour if you're yes, wrong. Correct. This is because they had a specific riddle in Gold Hunt 2 that all of us, like literally every single player, tried to brute force hack. Yes. Yeah. And it was like a numerical answer. So I had to do was like answer one, two, three. And yeah. I mean, upwards attempted. until you got the answer. Yes. But I spelled all the numbers out. And then when I went and solved that riddle, you just had to put in like the n- numerical. Yeah. And I was like devastated. Yes. Because I spelled every number out until 100. Mm -hmm. And then I still had to go solve it. Yeah, I had guessed up to like one or two numbers before the number that it was. And I'm like, ah, this is going to take forever. And then we solved it. It was like, oh, if I just tried for four more seconds. And it was far. That riddle was very, like, just physically, geographically far. And I had to run up a hill. And I got bitten by so many mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. 
I do too much for this Gold Hunt family. <laughs> too much. It's true. One of the features of Gold Hunt is it'll put you in places of the city you didn't even know existed. And that don't matter. Under the freeway. Mm-hmm. Twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the things they did this time as well that was a little different is they did a gold hunt that wasn't for gold. Um, they actually did it for Bitcoin. They did a, yeah, this, they did a bonus riddle because of a kerfluffle that they got themselves into. Yeah, so this was interesting because we partially solved it. But oh my god, we were so close. We did not actually make it to where we thought we were going to make it. Uh, Sydney and Chris's mom was helping us out with a lot of the stuff as well. And she basically had most of it solved. Yeah, like I would definitely say three quarters, but did it make that final leap? No. And she was trying to like bounce ideas off me. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> like, I cannot help you. So brain fucked from the final riddle of Gold Hunt 4 that I was like, you want to solve this riddle, go for it. But like, I didn't even understand like what they were asking for. That's kind of the thing. There are some riddles that you'll be like obsessed with. And then some you're just like, fuck that. Like leave it to someone else on the team. Well, like one of the riddles that we had this time around, it actually was like, they described a painting on the side of a building and that painting, somebody in the painting was holding or something in the painting was like a sign on the window in the fake restaurant on Mm. the building and you had to be like pretty much touching the building to be able to read what it said and it stumped so many people once i sat down and actually started thinking about it i was like there's gotta be a billboard with like a, a restaurant on it and so i just kept googling billboard restaurant and the name of our city and it came up and i was like i mean it's a long shot and sure enough that's where the answer was and yeah and so it's, I don't know, like, it's a weird premise, that whole idea that, like, it's so obscure, some of the stuff that we're looking for. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, everyone has, like, a different, like, vibe. I think it just totally depends on, like, what the riddle is. We've all had different ideas where, like, it will never, like, say, but you'll be like, it has to be a painting. It has to be, um, you know, a statue or, yeah, people just, that's why you need a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back on the topic of like how different people can interpret a riddle certain ways. Like the very, very last one that we were stuck on, kind of everyone was stuck on in the city. Like our only clues were two people had the same name. They came from like different nationalities. Some people shared a date. And we also had a plaque by a tree to look for. And so these little like snippets of like clues we're supposed to look for, we took to mean all sorts of things. So we went to the city parks all over town, like all over town. Mm-hmm. And I had the idea that, uh, oh, where are you going to see a lot of like names and birth dates and possibly nationalities and plaques by trees, cemeteries. So Cheryl and I had uh, wandered through uh, four cemeteries. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't, like, that far-fetched either because other people had the same idea. We were through the uh, municipal cemetery, and we could see people in uh, one car just driving up and down slowly, looking at all the tombstones, trying to uh, see if they could find the answer. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we found out, thanks to Reddit. So Reddit has some conspiracy theories, but Reddit also has people that are just, like, out for the truth. So I'm a pretty active member in the Reddit community. And that's how we found out that there was a reduced playable area. Yes. So we searched the entire fucking city (laughs) for this 50K before we found out there was a reduced playable area. Yeah. So, yeah, as we explained, like, level one gives you a whole bunch of clues. Level two gives you a reduced amount of clues. And those clues you can use because where they point around the city, you can use the draw the perimeter of the searchable area for level three Mm -hmm. so you're not all over town which was kind of nice better so so one of the funny things about living in our city is that our crime rate is a little strange and about two days prior to finding out that we were going to have to look for plaques near trees somebody went into our downtown core and just stole a bunch of plaques off things and so we're going around looking for, like, plaques, and half of them are gone. Yeah, shit's missing. Uh, 
Uh, What'd you get with... Uh, Shame on you, by oh. the way, whoever you are. How much did you get for the plaque money, Sydney? I mean... In the metal scrapyard. Listen, I have bills, and I don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. I do what I need to do. Shut up. I want to know who's going to buy those plaques, though. Like, you can tell me on the DL. I just want to Dirty know. metal people. Okay. Not people made of metal, but <laughs> metal's expensive. How's okay. construction at the cat ranch? I mean, it's going okay. <laughs> This is my dream. Donate to my dream. I just want to be a home for uh, sanctuary cats that are too shitty to be pet cats. It's like uh, Joe Exotic, but with cats. Just for normal cats, not for tigers. That's not, you shouldn't do tigers. Don't buy a tiger. No. I'm surprised in like that show, like a tiger was only like two grand. Out of control. This America, you're out of control. I just want to build a sanctuary for cats that don't want to be pets because you didn't choose that life and I got you. In case you want to know, there actually is a charity called Little Cats Lost in our province. But I want to be near the cats. And they actually will take cats that can't be pets and they will put them into being farm cats. Well, until I get a farm for all of my cats, donate to Little Cats Lost. Mm -hmm. So... Sydney, because of her connections to Reddit, she messaged one of the guys who, bless his heart, he was, was he banned from this gold hunt? How did that go? Listen, he's a warrior for truth, man. He just wants a fair, honest game. Gold hunt didn't like it. You can go Google the conspiracy theories for yourself. It's true. If you really want to see uh, how worked up people get, find out when the next gold hunt is. And during that time, look up the Gold Hunt subreddit because you'll see people having a meltdown. Hey, over... he shut it down, though. Like for because people cheat a lot. People don't like the subreddit because people cheat a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, during Gold Hunt 2 or 3, I was trying to cheat. I think it was Gold Hunt 3. And he would like shut it down overnight. So he was, I would say he he just wanted a fair game. Mm-hmm. It's not even the cheating. People who read the clues and they can't figure it out assume that it's being, it, it's a setup. Yes. against them personally listen if you're stuck on level one that's your fault and i have been stuck on level one so i'm not gonna you know pretend i haven't been stuck on level one mm-hmm. but it's not a setup if you're stuck on level one it's just not your riddle man that's why you need a team mm-hmm. it's not your riddle yeah i would say like doing this with a team is like the only way to do it uh, maybe if you're like some sort of like super smart person about your own city. Which good job guy who won this year's gold hunt. Yeah. Or, because it was a single guy on his own. Oh man. Yeah. How you feeling? My body hurts. Yeah. As I'm, to be expected. Listen, I'm pudgy and when you do this game, there's hills, there's stale there's stairs. I'm not ready for it. I'm just, my body just mm. hurts. I don't have orthotics. Yeah. I would say uh, one of my favorite things about Gold Hunt is how it keeps you active throughout the summer. Mm-hmm. Like you walk and walk and walk. If you lose like a step counter, you could easily clock in like 20, 30,000 steps a day. Uh, and I like use this game to quit smoking. You just transfer whatever obsession you have. It's pretty easy to transfer over to maybe I'll win 100 grand. Today's step count, FYI, is 19,485 steps. Damn. Woo. We handled it. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I find about how they're running Gold Hunt now, they don't like with the bonus clues, the microtransactions. I feel like I feel like the idea is you should be able to win just with the base clues. But yes. now it's starting to feel a little bit on the side of pay to win. Some of the riddles made no sense until we got the bonus clue. Mm-hmm. And yeah. even like once we knew exactly where to go because that bonus clue, looking at the original clue, we're just like, how on earth were we supposed to connect those dots? And the one thing about the bonus clues, at least for this final riddle, is that they you're spending however many dollars per clue and they didn't really seem to help too much. It was almost like they just kept pushing and pushing for you to buy more and more clues. Do you guys want to hear a thing? Sure. Because you know what my favorite part of the podcast, I do, I love a good surprise. And uh, a lot of our podcast is about how Chris and Cheryl know how the things, they know all the things and I don't know any of the things. But today I know a thing that they don't know. Because I have some friends, have some friends from Reddit that are helping us out. And I have the final, this is on pretty good authority. Uh, Gold Hunt usually releases the answer, but it takes weeks. So I just reached out to a pretty trustworthy person. 
Although by the time this episode releases, the true answers will be out, so we should say this is like unconfirmed. Yes. This is unconfirmed, but... It's confirmed, but not officially confirmed. By the time this is released, we can put an edit at the end of this and be like, it was real. Mm, it was real too much work time. for me. <laughs> it's real. Anyway, um, I have the unofficial, but I feel like pretty solid uh, solution to Gold Hunt 4. Excellent. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready, my friends? My yes. body is ready. Gross. <laughs> so anyway, I wrote a friend from the community and basically said, hey, I'm doing a podcast. Can you give me the DL? Because he's uh, pretty much doesn't like help people cheat or anything like that. But it was already solved. There's already a confirmed winner. And so he said, the answer was based on the octal numbering system. There was no hint of this until today. And the hunt was therefore unsolvable until today. The fact that someone got the fact that someone got using base eight out of a gazebo is somewhat suspicious because there are some there's some weirdness around gold hunt. So just so you're aware. And then he said Cassius, Marcellus, Clay, Ali, Notley, and Irene were the four people. 1810, 1942, 1939, 1951. The worst part of this is I have had a picture of the cherished lady plaque on my phone the entire time. I've looked at the picture of the cherished lady about three times since we got to this final riddle. Would you like to hear the cherished lady plaque? Yes. Okay. Irene Ann Christensen, 1951 to 2003. Reen gave all she had to everything she did. Her activities within the labor movement, the new Democratic Party, and her church were inspirational. She loved her family, her friends, and the outdoors. This mountain ash has been planted in June 2006 by her family and friends in memory of a wonderful woman she has missed. Nice. Clap, 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 clap. No cherished. Yeah, so part of the clue was actually that it was supposed to be on a plaque near a tree for a cherished lady. So we figured cherished had to be a thing, and then partway through being so super frustrated that, like, I couldn't think of answers to the question anymore. I was like, what if she's not actually cherished? What if it actually does not say cherished on the plaque? Or what if it's beloved or treasured? Yes. Everything says beloved, though. That's not fair. Does not say cherished. And I've had a picture on my phone the The entire time. time. We should also say that prior to this gold hunt, you have had prophetic dreams about where the treasure would be found. They never come true, do they? I don't know. Can you remember any of them? You said uh, your uh, previous ones, you said they were. And then we kept hounding you this time. And then you said you had a dream about, what was it, puddles and reindeer or something? Puddles and reindeer. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think I said my dreams ever came true. I think I said I always call it within a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. This time I actually did not call it within a neighborhood. So that's my bad. I'm sorry. You need to get more sleep. I was having an off gold hunt. Yeah, I would get more sleep if my neighbors would shut the fuck up. But um, <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah, so how much do you think that one guy that was, like, messaging you to try get us to give... Because at one point, Sydney and I found a park with Bob Dylan and Bob Marley and another Canadian who... He's kind of famous in our city, but not really that famous. And we were like, yeah, 100%, like, this has got to be where it is. We follow the trail to find a bunch of trees with With blocks. With blocks! When she posted about that online, somebody sent her a private message and he's like, hey, I found the cherished lady plaque. And we're like, oh my gosh. He's like, I'll trade you the information for, you know, what you have for what I have. Yeah, I'll give you the plaque, you give me the heavyweight. Correct. So. Oh, and he said, I'm trying to think of a fair way for us to do this. Yes. And I said, give me the neighborhood. Yeah, I should also mention like this round too, they uh, had certain precautions set up to prevent cheating yes like uh bomb words so if you put in one of these bomb words into your clue checker it would like count against you it would i think they would lock you out of the clue checker for like an hour correct um actually what it was was that they would lock you out of the next round for yes was it 24 hours Uh, it depends how many bomb words yeah fair enough so it was um depending on on the amount of bomb words but um 
something I, like that yeah i still think the best team like the story we heard edited a wikipedia page they're out of control their bomb word and managed to get like the record amount of people to use their bomb word yes I and s- i salute those people <laughs> Good on Gold Hunt for like giving people a free pass and being like, okay, we feel sorry for you, but don't be stupid about that again because we're not going to forgive it. Don't get your clues from a flippin' website that can be edited by the public. Yeah. And I'm also, sorry. I thought the. Don't abuse Wikipedia. I thought the even better one was when um, a team wrote like they printed out the all the riddles and they wrote like they had all the answers Mm -hmm. and left it at one of the sites yeah that was pretty good too savages yes i don't think we use any of ours especially when i got what was mine perineum that i found that one day i was like i ain't tricking anyone into typing that in no oh all our bomb words were a joke terrible one of the things that really rubbed me the wrong way is i mean we can go check it out so i can't say on solid authority but Oh, I fucked up my. <laughs> I fucked up when I told you the answer because I didn't tell you who um, Cassius Marcellus Clay is. Muhammad Ali. He is Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. Okay. So it was of not. Of course. Of course, of course, right? So it was not anything in our city. Oh it's wow! Like, yeah. Wait, his bench. He doesn't have a bench here. Yeah. Wait, two people shared a name. So a riddle is two people shared a name and two people shared a birthday or an important day. And two are different colors. So the peop- those people were not even Edmontonians or any clue we would find on site? Muhammad Ali is not from Edmonton. No. Has nothing to do with Edmonton. So I wonder how they would have figured that we would have sorted that out. I don't know. And I honestly, I still don't have this whole octal thing. I don't completely understand... Yeah. how that works but i just want to pretend i'm smart and read it so i'll be outed when this comes out if he ever hears this episode but i was like ha, that sucks i have no idea what he means okay i had to google it i think we're gonna have to like wait till the final gets released because it doesn't seem like sporting that they would get us to choose two people with the same name from anyone in the world yeah he's a heavyweight though yeah and he's the most obvious heavyweight but yeah but nothing to do with edmonton no we also discussed that heavyweights could apply to so many different things. Oh, Anything. Yeah. Anything. Devastated. I had the cherished lady on my phone the whole time. I let you down. What and, was her name again? Uh, Irene Christensen. Yeah. Irene, you're very cherished. Mm-hmm. So he didn't give me, just to clarify, he gave me the birthdays, but he didn't give me the whole answer because I did Google this because uh, I was... Too proud to admit I had no idea what he was talking about. Okay. About this. I don't know what the fucking octal system is. That's why I'm friends with Cheryl, because she's Mr. Science. (laughs) (laughs) Because she's here for. Miss Science. It's okay. I can change genders, too. Mr. Science. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) uh, I Google this. Mistress Science. Google for my friends. Oh, and like the Notley, because we have many Notleys in Edmonton. But yeah, straight up Grant Notley, who the park is named for. Mm -hmm. So um, look no further. Except for that, we already lost fifty k. So let me um, didn't pull this lose up. Lose it. We never had it. We never had it, except for in my dreams. Uh, let me pull this up. So octal for mm. the counting. This is a counting system. Take out your notebooks. This will be important if you're ever in a treasure hunt. Invented by octopi. Relating to or using a system of numerical notations that ra- that has eight rather than ten as a base. Okay. I still don't understand it. No. Chris, you're the math person. Do you uh, get it? I only learned uh, 10 base systems. Let me try this out, actually. One second. I don't know how this is an octal. I don't know what an octal is. It's 7,642. Okay. If I add all the birth years. Oh, I get it. Why? No, no you don't. don't get Fuck it. you, <laughs> dickhead. Eight is a base. Is it divisible by eight? Eight is always divisible by eight, but only once. It's a not. I don't understand. I can't admit I don't understand. We'll just have to ask your mom. She would have known. You're going to get like a 40-minute explanation. You will. A lifelong lecture. Yeah, my mom was really all or nothing. Mm-hmm. She's going to pull out her two whiteboards and write it all out for you. Mm-hmm. So that's fucked up, Gold Hunt. 
<laughs> that was it. End of statement. Okay. End of show. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get another beer. Okay. So, uh, because we had the opportunity, we called your lovely mother who... I'm so sorry. Can you just be like 15 minutes later? Okay. 15 minutes later, she was able to confirm the numbers that they are correct answers. And, um, yeah, that that's the answer. How are you doing? Not well. <laughs> mm-hmm. What are your issues with how the answer is? You couldn't solve this riddle until today. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up. As in this riddle was revealed to us about three or four weeks ago. Three or four weeks ago, there's a reduced playable area that you play in. Mm-hmm. Listen. And they kept dropping bonus clues. That, that you had to pay for. We, I guess we didn't have to because you they get released like for free 48 hours Well, later. okay, you don't have to pay for them, but... Um, the implication is kind of pay to win. Yeah, so you can pay for them every Saturday or you can wait 48 hours. The thing is that you always feel so close to the answer that you buy the $10 bonus clue right on the Saturday because you can't wait 48 hours. Mm-hmm. Because every Saturday, you can't wait. 48 hours, right? You could solve the riddle if you just get the bonus clue. So we did that three Saturdays in a row. Mm -hmm. Then we kind of went, fuck this. And then my uh, mom, our fourth teammate, was like, well, both of our mothers, not just my mother, was like, okay, well, because I kind of said no more to buying bonus clues. And she was like, oh, I'll pick up the last one. And then um, we actually had a different game, which we'll talk about in a minute. So we were like, oh, put it off. Like, fuck Gold Hunt. We're not solving it, like, in this century. And, um, yeah, that was definitely the clue that leads you to the location, the one that came out today. So That being said, have, had we gotten to the correct location, I don't think we would have solved it still. We would have definitely had to put my mom there. Yes. On our... We just took a little secret break here that you won't even know about because it's going to mm. be seamless when we edit this. But uh, she just whipped out the octal math. Yeah. She she, whipped it out. She knew it like right away. It was very impressive. Just like real casually knew it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the other thing that we were doing today, the other hunt, um, when the Edmonton Riddle was solved... It put our game on a bit of a hiatus because we all of a sudden started to like conspiracy theories and talk about, well, what if it was this or what if it was that? What if the cherished lady on the plaque wasn't cherished? So on and so on. And it distracted us from the game we were playing pretty fast. And that uh, new game we were playing today because uh, we felt like having clues that we could solve would be a nice change of pace. We felt it would make us feel better about ourselves is clued up and a little description here uh clued up they turning they are turning cities into playgrounds clued up games is an independent game studio specializing in outdoor and gaming experiences and what they do is they take a small section of your town and turn it into a playable game area mm-hmm. you need an app on your phone and it will place you on that map in your town and suspects and clue points to go around and you're kind of playing through a storyline like a whodunit sort of mystery Mm -hmm. so right off the bat uh it was nice to see that the playable area was walkable that like we could do the whole thing in one day and it actually is a timed event so we had from about eight or nine in the morning till five in the evening to complete this Mm -hmm. which was also nice because it means that there's a final end time yes uh one of the things that we noticed was a bit of an issue was gps has had a hard time in the downtown of our area to be able to get the location correct well did gps have an issue or did Chris have an issue because he uses Apple products. Uh, I specifically remember us being on one corner and all us all having our maps on each of our phones and we were all in separate corners. Mm-hmm. Well, did you have your phone <laughs> on high accuracy? I did leave you? it on whatever accuracy. I on. did. Well, good. 
And so then, if you have an Android and high accuracy GPS, which will drain your battery power in 30 seconds. Then it probably was. Also in that same corner, none of us were placed in the correct spot. Yes. Well. Where we were. And I will tell you, and everyone should know, GPS and tall buildings don't work well together. No, they On do Apple not. products. And Android. Especially Android. Hmm. Especially if you have the phone that Sydney uses. It's probably like the worst possible thing of all time. What's the motherfucker? I'll cut you. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, it, I mean, it, it was, it was a bit frustrating, but at the same time, it wasn't too, too bad. We did, we did end up taking a time penalty because we just couldn't get the one person and we're like, to hell with it. We took a time penalty because one of the, one of the features of the game is that you can pause it and we didn't know that and we just never paused the game. So, yeah, I... So Chris is the leader for most of the game because he set up this thing. And at the end of the entire game, like we're like one clue away from getting the final clue. They transfer the leadership powers to me. And I go and I take a look at some of the features that are available to me. And literally one of them is pause. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Because partway through I was like, gosh, like I'm hungry. I need to stop and get food. We started at like nine in the morning and it's like one o'clock in the afternoon and I need to eat three meals a day. And so I was like, I need to stop and get some food. We, we got need some, a break. We got some nachos. We did. And to see that there was a way to pause the game, I felt so guilty being like, I'm going to ruin this for our team. Because... Oh my God, I didn't care at all. And you know why? Because <laughs> the stakes were low. I think the message of this whole episode is if you want to do a treasure hunt, low stakes yes i had a nice day i had a nice day with cheryl and chris we did some walking um maybe a little bit too much walking for my chumbo wumba self but you know what it was a good day Nineteen thousand steps that's crazy is that from me though or from before you met me that's from you i think before we met up with you i had only done like 500 steps. Oh my god, good for me. 1,400 yeah. steps. 1,900 steps. 1900. How many steps? 1,900 steps. Good for me. Yeah, I recorded 17,000. Oh, so 19,000 steps. Yes, 19,000. I don't know numbers. That's pretty good. Yeah, we did really good. That, according to my watch, is 14 kilometers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it zigs and zags you, which is kind of... I like that better, though. I do, too. It was... Um, an interesting way of setting it up in the sense that, like, you could move around. Like, I do suspect some people just went in a systematic, like, up and down the whole playing field, just, like, hitting things one after another. Yeah, they just went to every location on the map. Yeah. Oh, someone drove the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, in yeah, we, we saw someone in their car, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the pause button only comes in play because you can win prizes and they don't really state what the prizes are. So they're probably, like, small giveaways but uh, only one of them was for quickest time where the pause button would have helped us mm-hmm. yes I, I guess we could have just paused it between but we didn't know walking mm-hmm. two sites i think also though it was just a nice day i mean we could have also gotten prizes for you know having i think the other categories were having the best team name having uh, we did have the best team name the best costume and the best doggo and the I best wish dog. We had a dog. We didn't have a dog, guys. We can't just get a dog on no notice. I mean, I could have got a dog on no notice, but we'd be dragging her in a wagon. We'd make a Poor few calls. Guy. Yeah, she's she's arthritic. <laughs> <laughs> can't just get a dog in a wagon on no notice, guys. Uh, no. So yeah, I think you want to cut in here with your uh, team name, with the team name we made. I made the team name today, and it was yes. the best team name. And we might still win a prize. Who knows? Probably not. Otherwise, it would have notified us. It was my team name because it was a wizard-themed murder mystery. So my team name that I came up with was the Ministry of Magic and Murder. Did someone get murdered? Or was... Yeah. Because yeah, it was sort of like D&D where mystery. you're brought into it, a world. It wasn't a murder, actually. It was just an elemental destroying things. Yeah, someone had conjured up a fire elemental, no. and it caused a lot of fires. It also was like knockoff Harry Potter, not real Harry Potter. Well, yes. The other thing is that, like, it was fun to play because the 
the puzzles were like it's a geared towards a family friendly game so the puzzles are geared towards being able to be solved by younger people so some of them we were able to get like right away like the they were very easy puzzles and it was kind of a nice refresher to be like yeah like I am still smart even with Gold Hunt was not was as super much fun. hard. Yeah. <laughs> like the uh, cipher one where it's like decode this message and it's like A1, B2, C3. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that's a little upsetting about um, Gold Hunt 4 is that our mom is like literally the type of person to be like, there's eight sides in the gazebo. Do you base eight math? <laughs> but it's fine. You doing okay there, champ? No. Do you need the Disney Plus I got password? bills, fam. I just want to, during our break, so that I could come back in one piece and not in shatters. I just watched Hamilton music videos, mm. so I'm just going to watch some more later, and it will be okay eventually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I watch enough Hamilton music videos, everything will be okay. I do think one of the things that was really funny about the whole thing was that like we were pretty sure we knew who had done it. And the first person that we talked to ended up being the person who did it. And Second. we... Oh, second. That's right. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so we didn't. We didn't even think that it was him. They just kept throwing this one guy. They're like, "Yeah, one hundred percent, it's him." Like he was thrown under the bus so many times that, mm-hmm. like, we're like, "Yeah, it's got to be him." And then because I couldn't see any other option other than this guy being the person. <laughs> 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 That is I didn't know it was <laughs> seven points off your podcasting license. <laughs> so sorry. It's all good. That's why I stopped because I was like, it's not going to be quiet. Good, good luck, Sydney. <laughs> you're going to be okay. No. <laughs> okay. I can wait till you're done pouring it. I can start again. I'm not done yet. Okay. <laughs> Goodness. Sorry. I'm sorry. I really it. thought it was going to be quiet. No, I knew it wasn't going to be. Uh, Don't. Yeah, I can drink the rest of it, but can you? It's... Or can you? Yep. Okay. Uh, can you? <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> so we were talking about. Oh yeah. So at the at the very end, when we're trying, because we finally got all the clues in front of us, and we're trying to figure out what's going on. In my head, I was like, oh, you know what it is? It's that we got the wrong weapon. Because you have to find the suspect and the weapon. And no, Chris had the right weapon, but I don't know why my brain just could not, like, interpret that it could have been something else. Yeah, because we had the choice is kind of like a clue element. Mm -hmm. uh, Because there was like five weapons. There was an amulet involved, a wand that was found, a cloak, a cauldron, and something other wizard wizardy. You should be the something right else person, wizardy. the right suspect, mm-hmm. and the right weapon. Yes. Yeah. It was kind of fun to see because the best costume thing meant that like we're seeing a whole bunch of families out in like crazy costumes. Some people had some pretty elaborate costumes going on. You know, the best was the gym teacher from the Philosopher Cell movie. She just nailed it. Yeah. I smile at her. That's mm-hmm. awesome. I don't smile at anyone ever, but I smile at her. She did a good job. <laughs> There was that one team all in sloth onesies. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool too. I don't. I don't understand that. There's no sloth in Harry Potter. Maybe they just all wanted to be sloths. It's not about wizards, though. It doesn't Unless matter. It's different wizards. Just having fun, yo. I don't dress up for things, so I don't understand that kind of fun. But you obviously didn't watch the extended Harry Potter movie. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. is it in the extended version? <laughs> Directors <laughs> cut like the idiot. sloths. Yeah, there's no sloths in Harry Potter. I'm comfortable saying it without googling it. People, if you find out there was a sloth in Harry Potter, you let us know. Comment on mm-hmm. our Facebook mm-hmm. page. Listen, I, I watched those movies. Today. I read those books. There's no sloth in Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Some diehard fan. There's not. Bet me a million dollars right now. You don't have a million dollars to pay me with. Yeah, but I'm going to win, so. (laughs) I think the moral of the whole story is that you should play riddle games that make you feel good about yourself and only take less than a day. I would do gold hunt again. Would you? I would. I might not buy the bonus clues. I still enjoy the fun of the challenge like up until that final riddle 
I was having fun. Gold Hunt is actually great until the final round. Correct. And always. I, it's always such a good time until yes, the final. Yes, correct. I just got frustrated so fast because you feel so super smart up until that point, And then you're like, what is going on? You want to talk about who you thought the final riddle was about, champ? Uh, no. I don't <laughs> think it really matters. And I don't think the listeners need to necessarily do it or hear what was going on. Like, yeah, it's just, it's easy enough to come up with theories if you're looking for a certain set of clues. It should have been. Yes, but... Again, we ran into the problem that once we knew what the playable field was, we couldn't place it in that playable field. And so I was like, okay, that's... If we can't make that work, we can't make that work. Listen, I'm more on the conspiracy end than my fellow teammates. But, like, really? You're going to figure out that part and then whip out the octal base number system? We paused. We had, like, a 20-minute phone call. Mm -hmm. It's not a fast thing. No. That's all I have. So you're saying that you enjoyed the wizard scavenger hunt more than the gold scavenger hunt. Yeah, because I want to do it for a day. Listen, it's easier to let it go if it's over a day and if it's for no money. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. the other thing. But I'm chubby and I'll only walk up stairs and hills for 50 grand Mm -hmm. or a shot at 50 grand. Mm -hmm. Uh, So if gold hunt was free, you wouldn't just do it at all. I'm not climbing fucking... A hundred stairs for no. I climbed an elevator stair today. I don't want to complain during the moment, but I did not enjoy it. You climbed an elevator stair today. Yeah, because you wanted to climb an elevator stair. <laughs> an escalator. <laughs> it's the same. I'm devastated okay. right now. Okay. Gold hunt. <laughs> I climbed escalator stairs mm-hmm. today that weren't moving. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I'd say I would still do it. Like if Gold Hunt continued on without offering a cash prize, but a solvable end. Because one of the things is, is like if you're not first to end it, now they do keep the uh, guessing uh, open. open. So any everyone can finish in their own time. Mm-hmm. Or you can cheat. Or you can cheat. Or your podcast. Yes. We didn't really cheat though. We were not that close. I was right there in that park. I just had no idea what the answer was. Yeah. I had the picture <laughs> on my phone, bro. And uh, we'll explain to you. Yeah, our a, other very, fu- very close call. In a future episode, yes. how close we were. Yes. And this is related to something else. This yes. is a teaser. This is a teaser for another episode for something that we're going to do with you later. Am I going to win any money? You, we I wouldn't might, say win. Yeah, we might find some. There's a slim possibility of that. It's possible. You could find some. A lot of money? I we'll mean, see. Yeah. I got bills. I got bills. We all have bills. Dollar dollar bills. <laughs> so I think like usually you ask me for my recommendation. Mm-hmm. Do you want to ask me while my feelings are so raw or do you want to wait? Do you recommend? Things? What things do you recommend? What things are you asking me if I recommend? Gold Hunt. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> do I recommend Gold Hunt? Can't do it, folks. Can't do it. Can't do it. You're just a broken woman. Broken woman. You got to spend 40 bucks. Even if you don't buy the first three bonus clues, you never know which bonus clue is going to lead you to the thing. You know what? Okay, maybe I recommend it if you have no investment in the money. And I would say like the buy-in is similar to an escape room Mm -hmm. in dollar amount. Mm -hmm. So it's in, in escape rooms. You don't really get a prize. No. Depending on which one you go to. I would say, though, the difference is that I never... Okay, maybe I don't not recommend Gold Hunt. Maybe I'm being a drama queen. But I never find the ending of Gold Hunt satisfying. And you can feel free to disagree with that. I've never found the final solution to be like, Ah, that guy, like, so deserved it. So deserved to win it. I've never... I'm probably the most bitter on the team, and you can disagree. Mm -hmm. But I would not have rocked up to that fucking park and been like, Ah! The octal system. Of course. (laughs) Of course. That's fucked up to me. It's a fun game. That's how Cheryl and I mainly bonded. That's how even I would say we have bonded. But I recommend it only if you want to do it with no emotion, with with uh, with no emotional investment in winning the grand prize. Mm -hmm. So if you're in it for the money, you won't have a good time. Buy lottery tickets if Mm -hmm. you're in it for the money. Mm Yeah, because even though it was kind of hard to tell this time, because we had the previous bonus clues from the other one, had we 
totaled up our entire value of everything that we spent, it would probably be close to like two hundred and fifty dollars. It's a lot of money between the maps and all, all the bonus clues. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I don't love the bonus clues, and I think they should stop that part of it. I think the bonus clues shouldn't be such an integral part. I think that, especially with the final one, it wasn't solvable until today. We wouldn't have got it without getting that bonus clue. Mm-hmm. But you have to understand, people that like don't give a shit about treasure hunts and are like, why am I listening to this episode? Fuck you, keep listening. You couldn't solve this riddle until today. Other other hunts you could solve yes, prior before to any bonus clues are on the first bonus clue. This is the first time they've ever charged for a final riddle bonus clues. Mm-hmm. You could not solve this shit until today. And Chris made an interesting point when we were driving back from the clued up one. Like, even though we were probably the, like, slowest team, we drove back laughing. Yeah, because there's no stakes. No. It was just fun. Mm -hmm. It was just a fun day. But Chris was like, it almost seemed like they were trying to make up for the fact that they lost money on this hunt because they were giving us a quote-unquote free hunt because the last one didn't go through. And it wasn't until you kind of, when we figured out what the answer was, that I was like, you know what? That's probably what they were doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to say it before. Like, I talked to some people and, like, we actually had to pause our recording and, like, wait a little bit Mm -hmm. because I was like, I'm going to explode, but I'm going to put it in the riddle solver that's, like, part of your dashboard first. And, like, since I've done that, I've just been, like, devastated. The funniest thing of the whole situation is like you were so excited that you knew the answer more than us and we were going to be pissed off and blah 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 and Chris and I are both like yeah okay like, yeah they're still Meh. fine I'm broken and I'm you're broken got it. I need the money more than them shut up so the moral of the story is be in it even though you're going to spend money just have fun yes because you're going to have a bad time if your expectations are to strike it rich by the end you know what's fucked up is I, that i've like told other people that because i like i talk to people on reddit that'll be like oh what are you thinking how are you doing and i'll be like listen like if you're because kind of what i always say on reddit especially for this hunt is like i found a, a gluten-free bakery that's like so awesome right by my house i like got my mom a cinnamon bun and we met this cat named clara and we were like hi cat and we called her over and she ran to us like a dog so those are my treasures that I found from this hunt. Mm. But like, no money treasures. No. That's fine. You you did get that one coin that one time. I am actually, oh, I can't. I Because I'll out myself. No, I won't. They'll never find me. I'm actually the actual first winner of anything ever in Gold Hunt. Yeah. They'll never find you. <laughs> never find <laughs> They'll you. probably find me, but I am the first winner ever of any mm-hmm. Gold Hunt thing ever. Yep. Verifiable. Yes. Yeah. So you did win something one time. One time. It's worth about twenty five dollars. Probably fine. not even. You That's won a fine. shiny coin. Listen, that doesn't mean that this wasn't a dirty fucking trick. Which is not like a nice end for me. For me personally, it's not a nice end. So if you want to walk around your city and Gold Hunt comes to your city and you want to do it based on that, that's fine. But um you had to spend they would argue, I already know, they would argue that you did not have to spend an extra $40, but the clue that was dropped today was solved in 2.5 hours, where the actual rule is that you buy it for $10 or you wait 48 hours. Mm-hmm. So you would have at least, on top of your map and your team maps and all Pay to win. that extra work, you would have had to drop an extra 10 bucks because it was solved in, t- in 2.5 hours. Are you going to rent your rant to your Uber driver on the way home? No, because I'm going to have to start from the beginning and actually I just I'm never going to talk about it again. Okay. Yeah, my bosses are so good. They always like see me working on it during lunch and they're always like, "Did you solve it yet?" They're always waiting for me to solve a riddle. I'm just never going to bring it up again. That's fair. So I'm going to take this as a segue. We didn't win all the prize money today, but since last episode, how much money has your demon pundit brought you? None. A bus ticket. Still just the bus just ticket? Just the bus ticket. You didn't find like any change in the ground or, I don't know, $5 in an old coat pocket? I gave money away since wearing the demon pendant. Mm-hmm. I went to Wendy's one day. You know a meal at Wendy's is $15? That's fucked up, Wendy's. Just get a sandwich. Check yourself. No, that was a combo. Yeah, no, just get a sandwich. No, I saved the Diet Coke for the next day. All right. So I can't... Can't just... argue with that. <laughs> I have to tell you. Um, 
Yeah, I went to a Wendy's, spent fifteen dollars on a meal, so that was a I got like a double double bacon cheeseburger or something. I don't know. I tried to order something and the guy was like, Do you want this number whatever combo? Because it's the same thing. And I was like, I'm not gonna sass you back because it's hard to work in fast food, but don't be rude. Anyway, um I got that combo and then there was a couple people with homeless, like homeless please help signs. And there's three of them and I had three dollar bills. So since wearing the demon pendant, I've given away three five dollar bills. Nicely done. So it's the opposite of getting money. Mm-hmm. But I hope they got hot cocos or whatever they wanted. Mm. How about you, Cheryl? Uh, I found twenty five cents in change on the ground. Nice. And so far, you got a new job. Don't skim over that. I brought that... it. I brought it up in the last episode. I know you got a new, better paying job, so you're winning. So, about a month after I started my new job. They did give me a uh, oh fuck off a raise for five thousand dollars a year, an extra five k. <laughs> What'd you do for it? I gotta know. Oh, I'm so aggressive. I'm not ready for it, but tell me. But no, we shouldn't talk about money. We're siblings. Should do to get the raise? Yeah, his, in a month. His in thirty days. His job. <laughs> you did your job. Yes, I did my job better than they expected me to. I think I do that every day of my life. I can't even go on that rant. That's a different podcast episode. You know, I've got to say, so say happy to for you, you for that. Witchcraft. Mm-hmm. Gotta light some candles. You did it twice, though. You cheated. How can I wear my pendant twice? Give me another beam pendant now. You could. I didn't mean to snap my fingers at you. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're disgruntled when you're drunk. I'm disgruntled because <laughs> he's just so good at life. Well, I'll get my own beam pendant. I'm going to have two. Beautiful voice and raises. <laughs> I'm really trying to practice prana breathing lately. And and street change. Now I would like to point out, well, I love you. Uh, at our our town. Even though you love him, he's the worst, right? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, our our city was voted one of the top ten worst cities in Canada for women. And one of the things that that was based on was wage disparity. So although I don't necessarily think that Chris didn't earn it, because he does work really hard and he's fantastic at what he does, I definitely do think that it's harder for women to get raises, especially in our city, than it is for guys Mm. to get raises. It'd be interesting to see what wage disparity is, because my job is a female-dominated industry. Yeah, I wonder. Really? Yes. That's fucked up because I'm in a male-dominated industry and I'm making, I don't want to say far less because I do get a lot of help and I have my job with no education, but I'm sure that it's still less. Yeah. You know what? We're all friends and everything's going to be okay. It is. Sometimes I just have extra emotional reactions to Gold Hunt, but it's Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're probably still friends or if I end up on the front page of a newspaper or whatever happens happens on the plus side do you remember what we said we do with whoever got the most whoever got the most what whoever made the most out of the uh the money spells buys the podcast beer no yes i don't remember yes i think i feel like i said i wanted more than one beer i said i'm gonna buy us a case of beer and you you scoffed at that do i get a fixed case of beer i don't know what are you gonna pick tnt no <laughs> Define case. How many how many beers are in a case? I don't know. Up to twenty four. Cool, I'll get back to you. And that's a lot of beer. For three people. Uh, It has to be one either six pack or a case. It can't be twenty four individual beers. Why not? Because that's gonna get way more expensive. That's not a case. Yes. If it's a bunch of individual Individual parts. I'm gonna write some people and get back to you. Okay. Wait, so you lose? Well, he wins because he made more money. <laughs> but he... Have I lost? <laughs> I don't know. I have some ideas for beers. Are you allergic to lavender if you ingest it? Yes. But then I will get back to you with a list. But <laughs> here is my thing. Because Chris and I live together, a win for him is kind of like a win for me. So you can get the case to yourself. You're not, like, even a little annoyed at this fuck over here? I'll split it with you. No, I'm not even a little annoyed. I've been happy to watch him excel. This episode is sponsored by the fact that Cheryl is a better person than me. (laughs) (laughs) The, the, The one thing about it is him being happier and less stressed 
it makes me happier and less stressed. When you're like in a partnership with somebody, a win for them is a win for you because it automatically brings up the happiness in the relationship. Unless you're not that type of person. <laughs> but I guess I am that type of person. I don't know. I never have any wins in relationships. Yeah. So I'll get back to you, I guess. If that ever... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have better paying jobs. I had better paying jobs when I was traveling. So did I. I have but... better paying jobs than those than I've gotten right now. Mine resulted in, like, screaming and night terrors, though. Yeah, fair enough. So. Mm. Yeah. Less of those. Yes. I am happy for you, mm-hmm. but also, like, it's just different, right? Like, obviously, your girlfriend's going to say nice things. Like, <laughs> and my Cheryl is like, you're just the greatest. But also, it's like, as a sibling, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's just different. It's like, <sighs> a little bit. It's mine. Dude, he got, like, the best, like, podcast speaking voice got like the best artist skills fuck this guy a little bit but i'm happy i am happy but also fuck you and that's like how i am as a sister in case you're wondering this is mixed emotions yeah. is what i'm hearing and also a little bit tempered by the whole Goldfine. break that we had mm-hmm. where we called our fourth team member and we're like do you know about the octal system and just whipped out the mm-hmm. answer yeah oh yeah <laughs> i don't know how to end this podcast that's okay chris is ready it's it's because because he's prepared. we're gonna finish this off with some questions so my question is steve demort nope tyler demort nope tim demort nope patrick demort nope and derek demort no all right all right all right here are my guesses don demort nope Art DeMort. Nope. I work for an art, though. Shout out if you're out there. Good boss. <laughs> Not a DeMort. Good guy. Okay. Leo DeMort. Nope. I know Leo, though, from Starbucks. Shout out to Leo. Good guy. Not a DeMort. <laughs> okay. Well, at least I'm getting closer. I'm naming people you actually know. <laughs> Wildly not even closer, but hey, some good guys. Uh, Dan DeMort. Nope. And Andy DeMort. Nope. Mm. I'm so confident take another five mm-hmm. off the top of your heads i it, no. i was struggling to pick five names to begin with i think mm-hmm. this then the segment gets too long mm-hmm. we gotta keep it going mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're never gonna get it at this rate mm-hmm. you fools mm-hmm. we'll have this like a patreon where people could submit their five guesses and then what if they pay in and then we read them on the air and if they're right um you take them out for dinner and talk to them <laughs> why not about what what if they like anime? <laughs> uh oh. What if they like bronies? What if they like bronies? <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. Well, I think that's about wraps things up for this episode of I Went Outside today. We regret it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Chris. I'm signing off. I'm Cheryl. I'm going to set the city on fire. And I'm a Sydney and I do the things. Cut that out. (laughs) I wonder if we are a little too tired. (laughs) I think we are. Everyone smack their face. I don't hear you doing it. Thanks for listening to this very special episode of I Went Outside Today. If you have comments, compliments, or just suggestions of what Sydney should take part in, send them to us on our I Went Outside Today Facebook page or by email to I Went Outside Today Pod at gmail.com. Also, if you could give us a positive rating and review wherever you listen to your podcast and share us with your friends. We would really appreciate you helping our small podcast become a little bigger.